In this age of SUVs, the Maruti Suzuki Sias and the Honda City have still been managing to bring home some decent sales numbers. And who knows, once the BS6 norms kick in in April 2020, maybe these more efficient cars will see a higher demand. While we are yet to see that, Maruti Suzuki isn't taking its game lightly. So it's brought out a new diesel engine, a 1.5 litre diesel engine developed in-house by Suzuki. But as I mentioned, the April 2020 BS6 norms are around the corner and that is expected to drive up diesel car prices by up to 2 to 2.5 lakh rupees over the petrol counterparts. So right now, the future of diesel cars sure looks uncertain, but Maruti Suzuki isn't going to shy away from a fight. So it's brought out this new engine that is capable of meeting BS6 emissions norms, although right now it still meets BS4 emission norms. As for the Honda City, well, this car has been a segment benchmark for a while now, and it's been powered by its 1.5 liter ID.Tech diesel engine, which was also developed by Honda a couple of years ago. So the Japanese have got the diesel game stronger than ever before. But coming to today, you can sense that the Honda City is aging now. You can feel that it is crude in its operation as a diesel car when in contrast you compare it to the Sias. But now coming back to this comparison, the Sias's 1.5 litre engine develops 95 horsepower as compared to the city's 100 horsepower. So while it has 5 horsepower less, it has 25 more newton meters of torque at 225 Nm, while the diesel Honda develops 200 newton meters of torque. Both these engines are mated to six-speed manual gearboxes and both these cars push the boundaries when it comes to fuel efficiency. But be that as it may, let's now get behind the wheel of both these cars and see how the laws of evolution have taken the diesel car game forward. Now, as I've mentioned, this is Suzuki's brand new 1.5 litre diesel engine. They've put a lot of work into it and it's very evident because this is by far the most refined diesel engine in its class at 1.5 litres or even if you consider bigger 1.6 litre diesel engines. This thing is just so refined. Most of the time it's so quiet you can't even hear it and overall I have to say that you know it shows that as time progresses technology and mechanicals they become better and that's very evident now all of this is very nice because we finally have a diesel car that you can drive almost as effortlessly as a petrol car yep that's right the clutch pedal in this car is just so light you will never guess while driving that this is a diesel car moving over to this gearbox while the throws are very light there's only one complaint i have here and that is every time you engage gear you know that final sound is always in every gearbox and you get a solid feel of shifting into a particular gear that's of course there in this car but there's a secondary sound it's something that you're not used to in near about any car so it's not a very reassuring feeling that's my complaint here but i'm nitpicking because otherwise this is flawless it's such a comfortable diesel car to drive and uh, it's so quiet as well of course as you push on uh, there is a slight amount of engine noise that comes in but if you're using the stereo again you can't really tell at all now there are two reasons why this engine is so quiet one it's got a dual mass flywheel and second well there's a lot of sound deadening materials so all of this has come together very well and overall this is the most comfortable and the most refined diesel car in this class you can buy today but coming back to this engine again I have to say just as hard as Suzuki has worked at refining this engine. It has also worked very hard to make it very easy to drive overall. So there is virtually no turbo lag, none at all. Just from the get-go, you engage gear and you depress the throttle and even off boost is very, very decent throttle response. So you tend to pick up speeds very easily and in a very seamless manner. And even when the turbo comes on, when full torque is available to you, that's when also you don't get a kick in your back acceleration under linear driving. And overall, this engine, again, it loves to rev. So whereas other diesels in this segment, they tend to run out of steam at around 4,000 RPM, but not this. Suzuki's new 1.5 diesel engine just loves to rev. There's plenty of punch, even past 4,000 RPM, up to 4,500. And even as you head towards 5,000 RPM, this engine will still be pulling. Moving over to the suspension setup, the Sias has always had a stiff suspension setup. Uh, now this car, the diesel, feels a little bit 
bit softer but otherwise the ride is very pliant it's very comfortable the car cushions bumps with absolute ease and finesse in fact the suspension is also very quiet and when you start driving faster this car remains very confident at high speeds so overall the Sias diesel feels like it's a very well put together package it's very refined and it's very comfortable to drive it's very fuel efficient as well this is now even more fuel efficient than the Honda City diesel yep so there's a new king over here but I have to point out at this stage that the 1.3 liter diesel engine Sias with a mild hybrid system that has an even higher fuel efficiency rating than this car at over 28 kilometers to the liter just over 28 kilometers to the liter so you see Maruti's mild hybrid system actually works it makes cars way more fuel efficient than they actually can because this is a new powertrain but without the mild hybrid system it simply cannot touch the efficiency figure of even the age-old 1.3 liter multi-jet diesel engine sourced from Fiat. Now I think there's a very good reason why Maruti Suzuki has not offered the mild hybrid system with this new engine. It's simply because I think they're saving on development costs because right now there's a lot of uncertainty about the future of diesel cars and Maruti has come out in the open and stated that it will make 1.5 liter engine engine diesel cars for its bigger models but that is only provided that there is demand for these cars in the market so right now we don't know come April 2020 we will see what demand for diesel cars BS6 diesel cars will be like because those cars will cost at least two if not two and a half lakh rupees more than their manual petrol counterparts so we are yet to see how this market demand settles over time Nevertheless, it's now time to take a closer look at the interiors of the Sias to see how it fares alongside the Honda City. Now apart from the instrument cluster, the interiors of the new diesel Sias remain the same as that of the other models. There's plenty of space for front and rear seat occupants. There's just so much legroom at the back that you really have little to complain about, although headroom for taller occupants can be an issue. The dual tone color theme of the dashboard looks nice with the forward inserts that are also present on the door pads and the beige upholstery in general lends the cabin a premium appeal. In terms of features, you get automatic LED headlights, LED front fog lamps, leather upholstery, an electronic interior rear view mirror, a touch screen and footainment system with brilliant voice commands and a whole lot more. Now the Honda City Diesel, this is now quite an aged car, it's been around on the market for a long time and when the car first came out, this car featured Honda's new ID.Tech diesel engine that has an all aluminum head and block. The result? Well it is super efficient, this car has always been very very fuel efficient. Now once you get going, there is a fair amount of turbo lag from this engine, so you need to change gears and uh, the clutch and the gearbox themselves, they are a little old school now, they feel a little heavy, especially the clutch, whereas newer ID Tech powered Honda cars like the WRV, the most recent new model, in that there's a phenomenal change. Honda has really worked hard over time to refine its ID Tech powertrain, but sadly the city shows its age and you know all of this is very evident. So once you get out on the road, whenever you're accelerating, there's a fair amount of diesel engine noise and it's always going to be prominent. Now this engine makes 100 bhp and 200 newton meters of torque. Now, of course the mid-range is where the meat of the power band is for this car. Uh, typical of a diesel engine, it runs out of steam when you push it to the top end. But otherwise this car is quite comfortable to drive. As for ride comfort, the city has quite a pliant setup and you're never really tossed about in this cabin. But coming back to this engine, when it came out this car offered class leading fuel efficiency of over 25 kilometers per liter unheard of in a car of this size and weight and realistically too this engine is very fuel efficient so overall the diesel honda city is all about efficiency and comfort now the engine is made into a six speed manual gearbox it has accurate throws overall it's quite easy to use i only wish the clutch pedal was a little lighter you know newer diesel cars are becoming more and more convenient to drive and that's something that's very evident in the seats now since peak torque of 200 newton meters 
kicks in at 1750 rpm, you're going to have to work that clutch and gearbox to keep the turbo spooling for smooth progress. The model we have here is the second from top VX variant, which has a similar equipment list as the Alpha variant of the Cias in this comparison. In terms of features, you get LED headlights, LED front fog lamps, leather upholstery, an electrochromic interior rear view mirror, a touchscreen infotainment system, a sunroof, and so on. Now, like the Cias, the City 2 offers acres of cabin space for rear seat occupants, but I do have to mention that the City's seats are more supportive. So overall, both these cars offer similar levels of equipment, in-cabin comfort and space. But it's the Cias that now feels a little bit more premium in terms of fit and finish, making its cabin feel a little bit plusher. But when it comes to drivability, the more modern powertrain of the Cias is definitely a couple of steps ahead in terms of refinement, ease of driving, efficiency and indeed performance.